AMG goes electric and the electric Mercedes EQS goes AMG <laughs> with the Mercedes EQS 53. And let's start directly in the front design wise. They have this vertical fins here, closed grille because you don't need the cooling. The only cooling is in the lower part and adaptive. And the typical EQS face here with the daytime running light, optional digital light, this so called pixel light with even more elaborated high beam functions. And this car is also equipped with the night package. So we have dark accentuations right here. And also, for example, at the side mirrors. The length is the same as 5 meters 22. Of course, normal EQS comparison, recently seen in our full driving review of the EQS 580. This is the all-wheel drive model and also the AMG model. The EQS 53 gets all-wheel drive. That means one electric motor in the rear, one in the front. Maximum of 1020 Newton meters. That's the peak performance. 3.4 seconds is the acceleration figure. And why is it 53? They say because there's still something coming up. There will be a 63 probably later, which is then even quicker. But 3.4 seconds is, of course, already supercar alike. As for the wheels, 21 or optional 22 inch. You can see it right here in a rather closed or turbine vent design. Really very massive. And this is here the opening for the wiper fluid, which gets the Formatic Plus batch. In this case, then, what does it mean? They have changed the orbit drive distribution a little bit that it's even sporty and of course you have even more power at the rear. The electric motors are indeed somewhat similar to the normal EQS but they changed even hardware parts in the electric motors that can just you know cope with more performance. Air suspension is standard with the setup of the AMG four-door coupe by you know the AMG GT four-door so Maybe it has a similar ride, I don't know. But we, of course, have the battery, which puts the center of gravity very, very low. Rear axle steering is also standard, up to a degrees of 9 degrees in the opposite direction than the front wheels. 10 degrees with the normal EQS won't make such a difference. It reduces the turning circle and makes the car even more agile, especially at lower speeds. Here in the rear, the design clues are this special wing, you know, bringing more downforce here. So that's, of course, not as aerodynamic then as for the efficiency. But we can still expect, I mean, with the combustion engines, when you go four cylinder, six cylinder, eight cylinder, the eight cylinders have higher consumption. Yes, but with the electric vehicles, of course, this one is not as efficient as the, for example, rear wheel drive only model or as the normal all wheel drive model from the EQS. But more or less, it won't make such a difference. So with our EQS all-wheel drive test, we had a realistic range of 390 miles or 630 kilometers. We can expect a little bit less than with this one, but this is of course still a very good number. Here, design clues in the rear, you have to look closely actually, because here there are three diffuser-like fins instead of two, and once again, more high gloss black in the lower end for a little sporty look. I have to say, here in the electric, the EQS, the difference between non-AMG and AMG version, maybe not as big, but then of course also the driving features, the normal versions are already quite quick, but there are more changes coming up in the interior. Oh, and have you seen here? Wider side spoilers as well and high gloss black sporty style. But what you cannot see at the moment, bigger brake discs here, Usually for electric vehicles, sometimes we don't even use the brake discs, but here with the performance version, they also want to offer performance braking. And optional, you can even get carbon ceramic brakes here. It's of course even more expensive. Yeah, maybe for the race track or something. <laughs> yeah, and with the Dynamic Plus package by AMG, you can even top up the, high, uh, the, the top speed to then maximum of 250 kilometers an hour or 155 miles per hour. If you need that, for example, for the racetrack. The battery placed here in the lower floor. It always gets the big battery, 108 kilowatt hours net. Of course, you need that big battery here for the AMG model. Charging here behind that flap, 22 kilowatt AC maximum or 200 kilowatt DC. And they made that intentionally. Other manufacturers went from 800 volt infrastructure inside of the vehicle and then can have a higher loading peak. They went 400 volt, but said that's actually better for the whole charging process because 
we only go to a kilowatt max, but then hold it for a longer period of time so that at the end of the day, the, far, the charging is faster. So they told me that if they went for a higher peak, the overall process would have been longer. And we have already tested it off camera. It's actually possible to go from 10 to 80% in 30 minutes at a high power fast charger. Looking at the interior, the dashboard would be standard with articles or a high-grade leatherette that looks also quite sleek. As for the screens, instruments, they are off at the moment, 12.3 inch for the digital instruments. In the middle part, 7.7 .7 inch for the hyper screen and then the passenger screen, 12.3 inch again. And as you see, it's also interesting to look at it when they are turned off because then you can see this huge black panel design. The hyper screen is standard for the 580 EQS and also here for the true AMG model. A standard EQS would still offer this smaller S-Class-alike screen, which then is just in the middle. The AMG model here, the 53, gets the AMG steering wheel. It will not be available in the EQS AMG line. If you want that fancier looking steering wheel, otherwise it has this slot design in the lower part and um, looks a little bit less sporty here in the middle parts. This is here split then in this area. So not in the AMG line, only here in the true AMG model, but you have the same capacitive buttons I had some talks about the capacitive buttons, by the way, and they said it's not about coast cuts. They do it for design reasons and for functionality. And we all agree here that functionality with capacitive buttons is worse. It looks fancy, but it's harder to control than with real buttons. And I think it's a mistake that they went for this way. The grip, however, we know the steering wheel from like CLS facelift, E-Class facelift and so on. It has a very good size and a very good steering control, I can already say it, right, say it right now. And here you will be able to pick the driving modes then and it will also be illuminated when, you know, the functionality and so on. These seats here at the moment have the optional animal skin package, which is not fitting to their sustainable luxury claim. However, which is good, standard on this model here, the EQS AMG, will be the microfiber on the inside and a high-grade article leatherette on the outside, so at least they make that one standard. We also have the shots from here from the AMG line, which we shot for you in the studio earlier. So this is actually a similarity between AMG line and the true AMG model. And even the steering wheel can also be at the later stage offered with a whole microfiber fiber wrap. Oh, and a classic detail should not be missing in a sporty vehicle, these aluminum pedals or aluminum. No changes for the rear bench. You have enough space here on the inside, both headroom and also for the legroom. We cannot get inside today because it's the very first show car and it's basically sealed off. At least we could manage that they open the <laughs> windows for us so we can take a sneak preview on the inside. But in our usual Mercedes EQS review, you can take all the different uh, interior details and so on. So we'll also link this video so you can tune in there. What is also special here for the AMG model is the sound design. We have experienced it in a normal EQS that you can already pick three different sound profiles. For example, when you're accelerating or braking that you have different sound experience. Here for the AMG model, they will have a completely different sound experience and also for other things you might activate, click here, click there for charging and so on that you get a unique sound experience. When we can drive this vehicle, we will keep you updated with that. So far, please tune into our EQS 580 driving review. See you there if you haven't already seen it. And of course, very soon here, really excited to drive this one.